This is Tim. This is Adam. And this is Critiquing Comics. Welcome to Critiquing Comics. This is Tim in Tokyo, and I'm talking this time with Adam Passion down in Nagoya. How are you doing? Doing good, Tim. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, well, long time no see or talk or text or anything. Yeah, a long time <laughs> pandemic is the way to say that, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's been even before the pandemic because, well, I mean, last time you had the cat event was, what, 2018? Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Cause we haven't had it for two years in a row. Yeah. 2018. So, yeah. And 2019, you decided not to have it. And then last year you couldn't have had it if you wanted to because exactly. of the pandemic. Um, but I, I was wondering like if there had not been a pandemic, do you think there would have been one last fall? And well, cat? we had been, yeah, we'd been planning it. And in fact, we, we thought about having a, We've thought about moving it online, um, but in in the end, we ended up not doing it that way. But yeah, we had we had been planning, even though there was a p- pandemic, it was at the early end of it. So we had been thinking, oh, it's going to be done by you know in a few months. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we were getting ready to have a show in in October, thinking that the pandemic would be done by then. And mm-hmm. obviously, it didn't go that way at all. No, um, we did participate in a international comics event in the philippines um called picof p-i-c-o-f um and that one they invited us on as kind of it was their inaugural event last year so they invited us on to do some programming for uh for one day of their show so we had a live drawing with uh kaneko atsushi um you can actually see his manga behind me maybe anyway um and then we had a discussion about the festival with all the organizers um which was a it was a uh what's the word i'm looking for um it was it was a catastrophe i guess on my end everybody else did really well Hmm. but uh on my end i had double booked that time and so i was actually out in the mountains camping but i had to call in and do this online like zoom presentation (laughs) and i wasn't getting any reception so i jumped in the car and started driving and like jumping in from the freeway (laughs) on the zoom call it was a yeah it was not good (laughs) okay um and so how is a big big ugly robot press going these days big ugly robot press has taken a bit of a hiatus um i got really badly burnt out just running the distro and running the yeah and and publishing stuff on that schedule Mm. because i was you know i was trying to put stuff out every month for two or three years um and it all just kind of came to a head where i couldn't really keep doing it anymore so it, it was really it was really a combination of two big factors one is that i quit um at that time, I had been working as an English teacher independently, and I was kind of managing my own schedule. And I quit that and became a full-time, nine-to-five suit-wearing businessman. Mm. So in a Japanese company, so that was like one big stress. And the other thing is, I had a, I had a weekly strip in a big ma- in a magazine here in Nagoya. Oh wow! Uh, a weekly comic strip, and that process of doing a strip with an editor where they're checking your drafts every few days and all that kind of stuff. It just like, I did it for one year and I couldn't go on after that. Luckily they pulled the plug instead of me, <laughs> but um, yeah, I couldn't keep going. So after that, I just kind of burned out and um, haven't put anything out for a long time. Hmm. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. So let's talk about the comic here. Um, this is called realm of owls. Um, it's a weekly web comic, um, credited to writer Geralf, uh, who claims not to find most books interesting enough to finish <laughs> reading yeah. and drawn by Vyandil. Um, and they're pictured on the site in the about page as owls. 
Um, and I was trying to figure out if these were pseudonyms or it kind of, did you notice there's a little link to see the site in Russian? I did see that. Yeah. So, Which, and yeah, it made me wonder if they're Russian, maybe those are Russian names. Maybe yeah, those are I, their real names. <laughs> I did some kind of researching myself. So, I mean, the names are, I mean, this is ostensibly written as like a chronicle of this realm, right? So these mm -hmm. two owls are writing as if they live in this world. Yeah. And they do actually appear that like once there is a story further along there, a story actually appears at one point and that, and, and they are part of it. They become characters in the story, but for the most part, yeah, they're just kind of narrating. And then they have like a little blurb at the bottom where they give a comment of each strip, right? Mm -hmm. So they give some background information about what it was like drawing that strip or writing that strip. But yeah, I mean, from what I could find, they're just owls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, and I think there is a bit, if you look around on the website, there is some, some, um, information about how I think that this Geralf or Geralf or whatever his name is, he he is a programmer and a writer. And I think Vyandil is a... Uh, he's maybe a designer and a, and the artist of this. So they're both working in tech um, jobs. Mm, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Is this a comic? Was my first question about it. Because it's... <laughs> It's. I don't think. I don't think Scott McCloud's definition of comics would include this. It's not. Well, the art is kind of sequential sometimes, but I mean, it reads more like an illustrated storybook. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. So, by the strictest definition, I'm not sure it's comics, but it's it, it's kind of comics adjacent. Yeah, I was going to use the exact same term. Yeah, <laughs> and and I think, um, you know, I, I when you when you sent it to me at first, I wasn't sure what to do with it. I thought, well, how am I going to make a comment about this? Because most comics are either plot driven or character driven for the most part, and this one doesn't really have any characters that return hmm. or even are introduced at any point, and it definitely doesn't have a plot for the first seventy strips or so. Yeah, so I I started at the beginning and and I read up to episode to chapter forty one, so these okay. are the strips from twenty sixteen up to April twenty seventeen, and those early ones it was all kind of just introducing aspects of the realm. It was more like an exercise in world building, um, and you know there were a few characters who were talked about a bit. Well, the the what do they call him the lord of the realm but that that position keeps changing the person the the owl keeps getting overthrown and replaced by a different owl every right. few days or something uh um so yeah the, i mean the ca characters were not so important there but then i skipped ahead to july 2020 and it seemed like the stories had become more character driven and the art had become a little sharper. Yeah, I noticed that too. In fact, there's a there's a very distinct change. I think it changes right around uh, strip maybe seventy eight. Hmm. Um, it's really ominous. That strip just says, "Please send help" or something like that. And <laughs> at that point, they stop putting comments from the writers at the bottom, hmm. and the the writer and the artist are both in the story at that point. They get abducted by a rival country or realm, and then they have to escape from that place. And so from that point on, I think it has a bit more of a story, but I mean, 78 <laughs> strips in is a really big lead up. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, I also noticed that, you know, in those early strips, it's like every one of them has three illustrations and maybe four five, six sentences. But mm -hmm. then when, later on, it gets more flexible. There might be four or five illustrations. There might be a lot more text than before, or there might be almost no text at all. 
and just yeah. tell the story with the pictures. And then that gets closer to being actual comics. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I, I think that that's probably something where the writer is learning how to write comics, which is not n- not really intuitive to a lot of writers because mm-hmm. they're not thinking visually um, if they're not actually drawing it. And so I think that at that point, you know, at, they've been doing it at that point for what three years or four years, so mm. or maybe more. Well, started in 2016, so yeah, looking at 2020, it's yeah, four years later. Four years, yeah. So I think I think after they've got that much under their belt, the writer feels more comfortable to let the artist kind of do his thing and stuff, or you know. So I I think both of them kind of learned how to do comics as they were going. It seems to me that this whole project, the actual structure of it, like the the web page and the way that it works, was as important as the actual comic itself. Mm. Like, I think they didn't use Tapastic or Webtoon or any of those, like, common platforms. I think they built their own platform on their own. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, and it doesn't use... It's not using, like... um, you know, jQuery or any of the other like standard kind of stuff that people use for putting together a comic website. It's just, I think they kind of wanted to build something that was fast, loads fast, especially an image heavy, heavy site. And in that regard, I think that it's successful because honestly, you don't really realize, you don't really think about the platform, which is what the best platform should be, right? It's like the the bass player in a band. Like if they're doing their job right, you don't notice them. So mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I switched from my phone to the computer and both of them, it's a really easy reading experience as far Mm -hmm. as web, web comics go. So, Hmm. and yeah, I mean, I like the design of it with the kind of parchment background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a nice looking site. Yeah. It makes it look sort of like that adds to that aesthetic that it's like a chronicles of some, Mm -hmm. you know, like the, the ancient scrolls of some society or something like that. So, yeah, design-wise, I think they're doing a good job. Um, and there's some of the character designs I thought were kind of cool. Like, uh, if you if you remember the character called Clacky, the living skeleton. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was kind of a cool design. So... Welcome to the Superman Fan Podcast. My name is Billy Hogan, and I will be your host. Before we begin our journey through the time barrier, please ensure that your red indestructible capes are securely fastened around your necks so that we may all travel safely into the past to explore the Silver Age adventures of the Man of Steel in the pages of Action Comics, Superman, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane, and World's Finest Comics. After we return from our journey, I encourage you to go to the website, the supermanfanpodcast.blogspot.com. I look forward to have you join me each week to explore the Silver Age adventures of the Man of Steel. I got to episode, like I said, 41, and then I skipped ahead. But part of the reason I stopped there was because I liked 41, and I wanted to keep it up in my browser. Um, There were a couple things I liked about it. So it's the one about, uh, so it's called Cards for Games. Okay. Uh, Hobos have many pastimes. Playing cards is one of them. And the first illustration, this hobo who is sitting at a table and holding a deck of cards just kind of his positioning and the look on his face struck me as you know kind of realistic um and just he has this kind of look on his owl face like he's just ready to play cards (laughs) (laughs) so i i really liked that first panel and also, the end of it was actually pretty humorous. The the other ones are kind of, yeah, it's doesn't make me laugh, but it's kind of, you know, it's nice. It kind of makes me smile this one a little bit. But uh, this one I found really funny. Oh, the this is the one where they're where they put cards in their mouth and they can spit them out. 
Right. Cheating also happens. In fact, hiding cards in one's beak and spitting them out at strategic parts became so common that it spawned its own game. (laughs) It is appropriately named Blah. (laughs) (laughs) It's interesting that this is where you stop because they go on at this point. I think the next four or five strips are just other games that they play. Ah, okay. Um, I'll have to. And they're all, yeah, they're all sort of variations on this. I mean, they're all just basically the running gag is that all of their games involve destroying the cards. <laughs> <laughs> so. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, it does seem like this, the strip takes a while to get going, but yeah, mm, by this right. time it is kind of going a little better because it's just explaining the first 40 strips or so. It's just kind of explaining the kingdom and, and how things work there. Right, the, the realm, social structure and the laws and the mm-hmm. and the culture and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I agree. It, it is very much an exercise in world building. And like I said earlier, there aren't really any characters that matter mm-hmm. for the first, yeah, over mm-hmm. 50, 60 strips, yeah. But, I mean, I guess it didn't lose me because it's not long-winded at all. You know, each strip is very short. It's just... You know, up like I said in these early ones, they're all three illustrations and five or six sentences. Um, so you move through it pretty quickly. So you don't have time to say, like, oh, gee, this is going on and on. You know, like, <laughs> oh, I'm already at number forty-one. Okay, right, right, yeah, yeah. So I I actually read until over a hundred, um, and like I told you at at strip number seventy-eight, that's when it starts to go into somewhat of a story Hmm. and i don't know if you noticed there's a point where they got a roommate that's a giant spider uh yeah i did see that so and after that point i think that's around that's right around uh strip number 40 or so yeah it's a little bit before where i stopped yeah Yeah. and around strip 49 the down at the bottom where the two where the artists make their comments the spider starts commenting and um and recommending other comics. So I, and I realized that the they're part of a group called the Spider. Oh, I, I don't want to mess this up. It's called like the Spider Spider Forest. Yes, the Spider Forest, which is a web comic collective, and um, the Spider Forest is. If you click on that, on any of the banners, it takes you to. It shows you where all the different. Cartoon, uh, you know, web comics are that are under that banner. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of feel like when they introduced this spider, it was them joining this community. There's there's some other moments like that where characters come in and they're from other comic strips and things like that. And so I feel like that was kind of like an organic way for them to start introduce like recommending other comic strips on the mm. from the collective was by having this spider <laughs> as their roommate. <laughs> I see. <laughs> So in, in episode 78, when they disappear, it's just the spider commenting at the bottom for the next, like, maybe 10 or more strips. It's just the spider. And then finally, they get back to their own kingdom, and they said, okay, now we can start posting all the all the strips that we made while we were gone. And then the artist, is, the artist has some comment like, I'll just cleverly... Uh, lie about the date and act like we were publishing these all along <laughs> and so um so i think maybe they they played catch up and that's what made it actually start being more of a story was that they took a hiatus perhaps this is just me i'm, I'm just guessing here but i see um i was kind of wondering as i looked at this who who would be the target audience for it because you know mm. it it sort of feels like a kid's book and you know it's there's nothing in it that's inappropriate for kids i don't think but it's maybe a little difficult in terms of vocabulary yeah yeah it's definitely it's definitely kid safe though I, they never use any uh foul language or there's no you know overt sexuality or anything like that so it's definitely kid friendly but i i agree i'm not sure who it's for I mean, I have to be perfectly honest and say that I don't really read many web comics, so I'm not sure 
when I saw all the other ones being recommended by that spider roommate, I thought they don't really grab me, hmm. you know? So I, I realized maybe I'm not the intended audience for web comic <laughs> in the first place. Yeah. Well, we're not getting any younger. I mean, certainly a lot of stuff I hear about, like, Oh, that's for people half my age. So. <laughs> <laughs> or even yeah. younger, but still, I, you know, I found this fairly entertaining, even, even if I'm not particularly the target audience for it. Yeah, I agree. You know, when you said that it reads really, really easily, I agree. And it, it's weird. The fact that there isn't really a plot and there isn't, there aren't really, uh, characters that pull you in despite that you can kind of keep going through, you know, 20, 30 strips, um, without really thinking about that. So, I would be curious to keep reading it just to see where it goes at this point. Now that there is a bit more of a story happening and some more, um, I don't know, conflict in Mm. the story. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Conflict. Okay. Yeah. I I certainly didn't see much conflict in the first 41. (laughs) Yeah. Not at all. (laughs) Not at all. So honestly, I had to keep reading just because I, I thought there has to be at some point, they had 250 strips on the site or something like that. There has to be at some point where some conflict is introduced or else just writing it every time must be a pain, right? If you don't have anything to pull yourself into it. So hmm. yeah, that's, that's actually one of the things that kept me going to, to see where it starts picking up. And yeah, I might've mentioned it to you. I mistakenly thought that this comic had been discontinued. Because at the time that I first looked at it, the most recent strip was uh, number 250. And it says, We regret to inform you that we are indefinitely discontinuing our coverage on the plains of approximately 64 villages due to forces beyond our power. Um, hmm. And I, I took that to mean that the strip was ending. But no, the, the following week there was another one. So... <laughs> Um, I don't know what the story was on. The, I'd have to read the ones before it, which I didn't. So, yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> I didn't get that far, obviously, but huh. Hmm. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. I I would. I mean, it's worth a look. I think. Yeah, it's an impressive feat that they got this far, and and they must have at least some people reading it. Otherwise. I would have been dis- as a writer myself. I would be discouraged long ago if I didn't have you know, if they didn't have <laughs> enough fans. So, um, I oh yeah, in the early strips, I don't know if they've come back to this, but there were several that were about how how stupid pigeons are. Yeah, um, I thought that I was hoping they would do more with that. I don't know if they did in the ones that I skipped, but um, that was a good gag. I thought. Yeah, I thought so too. Like the first when they introduced the messenger pigeons and they had these like the big trebuchet on top of the thing that launches them and because they can't trust them to fly on their own and stuff. It was a good it was a good gag that I didn't see go anywhere, at least from what I read. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then some pigeons are fire breathing because they <laughs> eat lava. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing about this is that there's a bunch of weird um, fantasy stuff that's introduced and then they don't really take it anywhere. It's kind of a shame because some of the ideas are really funny. Like Mm -hmm. there's a hero that's a unicorn, but they call it a horse. And then they say, you know, apparently it's based on this mythical creature that doesn't have a horn on its head, but we don't believe those really exist. (laughs) so, (laughs) So it's kind of this flipping the unicorn horse thing on its end. So there's a bunch of things like that that could be really funny if they teased it out, but they just kind of passed it over and mm. moved to the next story. So Yeah, yeah. Maybe they're coming up with good ideas that they're not uh, keeping around long enough. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, of course, I'll put the link for this in the show notes. Uh, it's realmofowls.com. So... Um, anything you'd like to promote? I know you said the uh, big ugly robot is uh, kind of shut down right now. Yeah, it's on an indefinite hiatus, so I do plan to get back to it. Um, I, that burnout, I don't know if you've ever experienced burnout, um, but for me, like the burnout was kind of like 
it was almost like anxiety inducing. So when I thought about sitting down and drawing, it would make me feel like, uh, it would make me kind of have a, almost a, a little bit of a panic attack. Mm. Um, but I'm, I'm over that point now where I've actually started to entertain the idea in my head, you know, I could draw again, maybe. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, when I have some good story ideas and stuff, I think I'd like to jump back in. I don't know if I'm going to ever go back to publishing other people's stuff because that, um, that ended up being kind of a harder than I thought it would be. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I definitely want to start making some of my own work again and getting it out there. So, mm-hmm. so I guess it's the pause button is there. My finger is hovering, hovering over the pause button. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, and then maybe cat this fall or next fall or. <laughs> yeah. Well, so cat definitely cat will be participating again in the Philippine international comics festival um, in some capacity. I'm not sure what yet. And we hope to bring back live festivals when, when that is, you know. I looked at Japan's vaccine schedule, and apparently they're hoping to get critical mass by the year uh, 2180. So hopefully <laughs> around that time, everybody will be vaccinated at the current rate. Yeah, it, it almost feels like you're not joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, in... in in may they're saying like for every month after that may on they're going to be getting large shipments of vaccine in so it's okay. going to start moving forward better than it has been because they well, they just like started that. the elderly people like in the last week <laughs> yeah that's exactly i mean you know when i first checked they were doing a thousand people a day and then it went up to two thousand by the second week and then by the third week, it went back down to a thousand. Mm. And so, honestly, by that schedule, if you calculated it, it really would take over a hundred years for them to get everybody in the country. So, um, I think they've picked up since then. But, but yeah, I, I really hope they start rolling it out in mass because mm-hmm. I, I want things to return to normal at some point. Yeah, it's been such a bad rollout so far. The wheels actually fell off. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it looks like starting in May, it's going to really get rolling relatively. So yeah. But anyway, uh, thanks a lot for coming on and talking about this comic. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Tim. I appreciate it. Support this podcast on Patreon for as little as two dollars a month. With your pledge of at least $4 a month, you can access hours of bonus commercial-free podcasts. And if you give at the $10 level, you can review the book of your choice with me on Deconstructing Comics. Pledge your support now at patreon.com slash deconcomics. And go to deconstructingcomics.com to connect to us on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, to shop on Amazon to support the show, and to find links to subscribe to the podcast. Our theme is from bensound.com. As I juggle my work and several podcasts, I'm not ready to review the next Stan Lee bio with Emmett yet. So, next week's Deconstructing Comics will feature a manga-related chat with Patrick. We're planning to talk about why there have been a number of manga characters with eyes like cats. What does it say about the Japanese attitude toward cats? Be here next week. Till then, this is Tim, and thanks for listening to Critiquing Comics.